Every day, billions of people rely on caffeine to wake up and get through the day. In fact, it's the most widely used psychoactive substance in the world. But what exactly happens to you inside your body when you drink coffee or caffeine? How does it wake you up, make you more alert, and increase your motivation? Well, when you drink coffee, your body can experience many different changes and go through a number of different processes, but the actual intensity of the impact that caffeine has on your body is highly influenced by how much of a tolerance your body is built up to caffeine consumption over time. For example, if you have a low tolerance, caffeine can send your energy levels through the roof and leave you feeling jittery and anxious. On the other hand, a high tolerance can make one or two cups of coffee feel like water. But in a nutshell, after you drink coffee, that caffeine is quickly absorbed upon consumption, going from your gut into your bloodstream very fast. It'll then travel to the liver, where it gets broken down into compounds that affect the function of various organs. The main organ caffeine impacts is your brain. It blocks the effects of adenosine, which is a neurotransmitter that relaxes the brain and makes you feel tired. So rather than the common misconception that caffeine provides you with energy, it instead inhibits a neurotransmitter that makes you tired. You see, adenosine is the broken down byproduct of cellular metabolism. As your cells work and perform their functions, you build up more adenosine. So by the end of the day, adenosine levels are normally pretty high. And when those levels rise, we start to feel tired and we become sleepy. Caffeine blocks these effects that adenosine has on the brain. It does this by binding to the same brain receptors that adenosine would bind to instead. This means that when caffeine binds to that receptor, there's no place left for adenosine to bind to that same receptor, leading to a reduction in tiredness and an increase in alertness. This effect is further increased by the fact that caffeine also enhances the levels of adrenaline in the blood. It also increases brain activity of the neurotransmitter norepinephrine and dopamine. Neurotransmitters are chemicals of the brain that send signals and ultimately have an effect on many things including our mood and energy levels. So after taking in caffeine, norepinephrine and dopamine further stimulate the brain, promoting a state of alertness, arousal, and focus. Not only that, caffeine also increases the sensitivity of your dopamine receptors. In combination with the increase in dopamine, you'll get a double whammy, so to speak, in terms of how the dopamine will impact your body. This is great for boosting energy because dopamine is one of the most important neurotransmitters in your body. This is especially true in regard to exercise and athletic performance because dopamine is associated with movement. Dopamine is also a big part of the reward center of your brain, which is why when activated, as in the case of caffeine consumption, you'll feel happier and more accomplished. Another thing that dopamine will do is it'll make you feel significantly more motivated. This is why people that are low in dopamine have trouble starting and finishing tasks and staying focused. So to flip that around, if you boost your dopamine levels with caffeine, it can help you become more productive and accomplish more. So it can help increase motivation and focus while studying or working as well. Now, aside from the psychological benefits, there are also a lot of health and performance benefits that caffeine can provide for your body. The totality of scientific evidence concludes that coffee is overall good for your health, and those health benefits include better glycemic control, better cardiovascular health, a small reduction in blood pressure, and even a reduced risk of cancer. Some of these health benefits can be attributed to the high amounts of phytochemicals found within coffee. Specifically, it's the polyphenols that have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. On top of that, some people also find that they can work out harder, they're stronger, and they have more endurance when they have caffeine before their workouts. However, the interesting thing is, research indicates much of this might be the result of the placebo effect, meaning it increases performance because people believe it should, instead of an actual direct physiological change. For example, one study found that believing you're on caffeine seems to improve performance more than actually consuming 6 milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight, which is about 5 cups of coffee. Another study found that a hefty pre-workout cocktail of 284 milligrams of caffeine had considerable mental effects, but neither strength nor power was enhanced compared to a placebo. Now, don't get me wrong, the increase in energy that you experience when consuming caffeine can be very beneficial, especially on days when you're low in energy and lacking in motivation. And many studies show that caffeine actually does improve strength training performance when you consume three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight or more. However, it does seem that much of these benefits of caffeine on exercise performance are driven oddly enough by the placebo effect. 
But now, what about fat loss? What kind of effect does caffeine have inside your body on body fat? It's actually very common for people to consume caffeine because they believe it'll help them get lean faster. But unfortunately, it doesn't directly help much, if at all. While caffeine might increase your metabolic rate if you haven't built up a tolerance to it yet, even very high dosages generally don't cause an increase in whole day energy expenditure of more than 100 calories. In fact, some research finds that caffeine has no effect on energy expenditure at all. So you're not gonna be burning any significant amount of body fat from a higher metabolism thanks to just drinking coffee. But one way that caffeine may help with fat loss is in the area of appetite suppression. There are many anecdotal reports of coffee helping people skip breakfast while fasting and in general, reducing hunger throughout the day. There's also a meta-analysis that backed this up that found that coffee could help reduce appetite anywhere from half an hour to four hours after consumption. It also found that somewhere between three and four and a half hours after drinking the coffee, the appetite suppressant effects wore off. With that said, you have to keep in mind that there are other studies available that find that caffeine doesn't produce appetite suppressing effects at all. However, it may not be the caffeine specifically that's responsible for this appetite suppressing effect that coffee may provide. Rather, there may be other compounds within the coffee that lead to a reduction in hunger. We have evidence of this in multiple studies, but one particular study compared participants that drank either a placebo, caffeinated coffee, decaffeinated coffee, or water with caffeine added in. And the researchers found that the decaffeinated coffee actually had the biggest impact on raising peptide YY and significantly reducing hunger. The second runner-up was regular coffee. Meanwhile, the placebo and the caffeine drink mixed with water had no effect. So even though drinking coffee may help you reduce appetite, caffeine itself doesn't seem to provide much of a direct benefit for fat loss at all. Now, aside from the neutral and the positive benefits that taking in caffeine can provide, it can also have some drawbacks. First of all, you might experience a crash about five or more hours after consuming it. This isn't necessarily bad, but it can be an issue if you need to be productive later on in the day. The reason for this is that caffeine has about a five hour half-life, meaning that if you consume 100 milligrams of caffeine now, you only have 50 milligrams of it left in your system five hours from now. And then five hours later, you would only have 25 grams of caffeine left, and so forth. However, keep in mind that the actual half-life of caffeine depends a lot on the individual. Some people eliminate caffeine faster from their bodies than others. In fact, according to a book on caffeine by the Institute of Medicine, caffeine's elimination half-life may range between one and a half and nine and a half hours. When caffeine gets eliminated from the body, it'll no longer bind to the adenosine receptors in the brain, which then can rapidly increase how fatigued and sleepy you feel. With that said, even though you might feel sleepy, if you go to bed, the sleep you get will likely still be lower in quality than what you would otherwise experience. Research shows us that one or two double espressos consumed 16 hours before going to sleep still impair sleep quality by decreasing the time you spend in the deep stages of sleep. After 16 hours, the caffeine that's in your body will have on average been cut in half more than three times, meaning that if you consume the 100 milligrams of caffeine, you'll have less than 12 and a half milligrams left after 16 hours. However, even though that's the case, it still seems that caffeine consumption earlier in the day will still impair sleep quality. You might not feel like your sleep quality is affected or worse than normal, especially if you're already accustomed to always having caffeine, but it would actually be detectable with a high quality sleep tracker. Another downside of caffeine is that you can't effectively use high doses of caffeine consistently. That's because your body will become used to caffeine, reducing or eliminating its beneficial effects. What I mean is that tolerance to caffeine builds up quickly, even at relatively low dosages. Using just one and a half to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day, which is actually below the threshold required to physiologically increase strength training performance, but this low level still leads to complete tolerance to the same dosage within just four weeks. So to avoid the downsides of tolerance, you might think you can just drink more and more caffeine over time, but that's just not the case. Research shows that at about 750 milligrams per day, your tolerance to caffeine will become complete, meaning you cease to get any more benefit out of it. You might feel like you do, but you're actually just fighting withdrawal symptoms at this point. Speaking of withdrawal symptoms, some people assume that only illegal drugs cause withdrawal symptoms, but you can definitely get a similar experience when getting off of caffeine. Tolerance and withdrawal build up a lot earlier than most people think. Consuming just 100 milligrams of caffeine daily, which is about equivalent to just one cup of coffee, is enough to cause withdrawal when you stop. 
The most common withdrawal symptoms include headaches, fatigue, depression, difficulty concentrating, irritability, and impaired sleep. To avoid these withdrawal symptoms, many people are stuck in a negative spiral where they use more and more caffeine and become progressively more and more sleep deprived and reliant on caffeine to just feel normal. The only way to break that cycle is to go through withdrawal and be more rational with your caffeine dosing. You might, for example, only decide to consume caffeine once or twice per week going forward if you want to maintain psychological and performance benefits without the downsides. But if you do wind up going through caffeine withdrawal, the most common withdrawal symptoms that you're likely to experience are headaches. Those can happen because if you're caffeine adapted, consuming caffeine causes your blood vessels to expand. The issue is if you don't consume caffeine, then those blood vessels will constrict, which can cause a headache. Interestingly, the opposite is true if you're not caffeine adapted. In that case, caffeine consumption doesn't expand, but instead constricts those same blood vessels. That's why somebody who normally doesn't consume caffeine might experience a headache when consuming it. Meanwhile, someone who has built up a tolerance may not. I know it's a little confusing, but that's actually how it plays out. Another thing that's important to know is that caffeine causes the secretion of sodium via urine, which is why it's important to consume enough sodium if you drink a lot of coffee. And you also want to make sure you're drinking enough water throughout the day to stay hydrated. Now while those downsides are definitely something that you want to keep in mind, one piece of good news is that contrary to popular belief, consuming caffeine does not cause adrenal burnout or adrenal fatigue. There is actually no such thing in medical research because your adrenals could take you through 200 years of activity without issue. Adrenal fatigue is mostly just a made up term by marketers. So you're not going to feel adrenal burnout as a result of consuming too much caffeine. Instead, what might happen is that you will get to the point where you've consumed so much caffeine that you've saturated all your adenosine receptors and now you won't experience the benefits anymore, but rather you'll experience withdrawal symptoms when getting off the caffeine, like I mentioned before. So that about wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you aren't exactly sure how to set up the ideal diet and workout plan that'll work great for your lifestyle, preferences, and your individual body, then head on over to my website and try my free six week shred. With our program, you'll get a customizable diet plan based on the amount of meals you wanna eat in a day and the type of foods that you enjoy eating. So whether you wanna fast all day and eat only one huge satisfying meal at night or you wanna eat five or six smaller meals a day, we can help you set that up and anything in between. You'll also get a full workout plan with a video exercise library, a cookbook, and of course a coach will be assigned to you to guide you and answer any questions that might come up. As an added bonus, like I said, if you follow through and simply just stick to the plan, you'll get a full refund at the end and you'll get the program for free. We do this to help encourage you to follow through. And when people simply follow through with our program, they're losing 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six weeks. To find out more, click the link below in the description, or you can head on over to my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Okay.